Live from Sydney, 7 News with Ann Sanders. First at four, breaking news, Melbourne is officially closed for business as sweeping new lockdown measures come into effect and major industry is shut down. The city is deserted with residents told to stay in their homes. In Sydney, we're being told don't leave home without a mask. That was a message from our Premier today who advised everyone cover up in high-risk environments. 13 new coronavirus cases have been recorded in New South Wales overnight as authorities trace close contacts to stop the spread of the disease. Alex Hart has more. And all over Sydney today, there has been a significant uptake in the use of masks on public transport, in places of worship and at shopping centres. Many people happy to follow the state government's latest advice urging people to wear them when social distancing can't be maintained. If it was a crowd to train, definitely, definitely. If it becomes mandatory, I'm happy to do it. I've actually got a packet of them in the bag. The Premier said she wore one last night while shopping and wants people to carry them at all times just in case. You should do what I do. I always have a mask in my pocket. If I feel uncomfortable about a situation, I can wear it. But there is some confusion about the government's latest position on wearing masks. For months, health officials urged the public not to wear them due to concerns about supply and the fact some doctors believe they can do more harm than good. A month ago they said don't wear masks, you're using our precious masks for people who do need them and the inference being that we didn't need them and now they're telling us that we should probably wear them. Labor wants masks to be made compulsory on public transport, at places of worship and in shopping centres. Also says commuters should be given them for free if they don't have them. I think that instead of handing out a fine, people should be handed a mask. Doctors say if you are wearing a mask, make sure you wash your hands between use. Only touch it at the tyres or elastic and keep it in a sterile or Ziploc bag before and between use. And. Thanks, Alex. Meanwhile, the Premier says Victoria's new Stage 4 lockdown will help New South Wales to contain Sydney's fresh COVID outbreak. Chris Reason is across this news. Chris reports the city's on a knife edge with more new cases today. Yeah, good afternoon to you. And yeah, that is correct with the New South Wales government calling this week a make or break week yesterday. Today's figures, the official stats for the state, would have come as some relief, despite places like this, St Bridget's Church in Marrickville and also the Hotel Jesmond in Newcastle, having to shut for deep cleansing after uh, visitors to both had tested positive to COVID. A total of 13 new cases in the official tally today, none from new outbreaks, eight with known links, three in hotel quarantine, one a returned resident back from Victoria and one case of unknown source. Now, police have also released their weekend data of infringement showing 16 fines issued. One, interestingly, to a 44-year-old woman who allegedly provided false compassionate leave reasons on her visiting permit. Now, she's been sent back to Victoria and fined $1,000. And the Premier is saying today that the unprecedented stage four lockdown and curfew in Victoria will help New South Wales prevent future occurrences of those sorts of incidences. Let's take a listen to what she had to say this morning. There will be a positive outcome for New South Wales because of the Victorian lockdown insofar as there's far less mobility amongst Victorians and that will help us in managing our borders as well. Now, further on COVID law enforcement issues today, the Border Force uh, Agency saying that they're detecting a massive spike in illegal imports of medications believed to cure COVID. For instance, 26,000 tablets of hydroxychloroquine uh, imported into the country. That's the drug that US President Donald Trump was at one point advocating. Health officials here say it is extremely dangerous to health. And Thanks very much, Chris. Long-time adversaries, the union movement and big business have joined forces to demand the government pay for Australians with COVID symptoms to take time away from work. Our political correspondent Tim Lester is live in Canberra. Hello, Tim. Paid pandemic leave is looking more likely. It is, Anne. In fact, the government brought in the unions and business leaders into the one room to discuss workplace reforms. Well, they've had an early success of sorts. Today, the ACTU and the Business Council of Australia have written a joint letter to the Attorney-General calling for federally funded 
paid pandemic leave. Now, Victoria's Premier Andrews has already estimated 80% of his state's COVID infections are happening at work. As well, with casuals, more than one third of our workforce has no sick leave, no way to be paid if they stay at home with their symptoms. No one should be. The key principle is this. No one should be in a circumstance whereby they are going to work because they don't feel like they have an option. What we will do, and the Attorney-General has this underway, is consultation with the key stakeholders to, to work through these issues. We've got to be cautious about how much further money we borrow. Pandemic payments would be great, but, it's, but it, you're limited. Some people just don't have the means to, to stay at home from work. So there's got to be some form of assistance. So what's the Prime Minister's view on the issue, Tim? Well, initially, Anne, he waved off the idea, perhaps worried about adding hundreds of millions in costs to the Commonwealth's budget. Uh, the last Thursday, when he was pressed on it, he did acknowledge that the federal government is at least considering paid pandemic leave, Anne. Tim, Mr Live in Canberra. Thank you very much, Tim. Two NASA astronauts have made a dramatic return to Earth with their landmark mission now complete. Their incredible touchdown, the first manned water capsule landing in almost half a century. David Warwood has more from our US Bureau. Well, it's mission accomplished for the team behind the SpaceX Crew Dragon, which made its cosmic return to Earth, splashing down just off the coast of Florida. A heart-stopping moment and the first time in 45 years a capsule has made a water landing. On behalf of the SpaceX and NASA teams, welcome back to planet Earth and thanks for flying SpaceX. Colonel Doug Hurley and Bob Benkin, dubbed the Space Dads, were picked up by nearby retrieval boats, stretched out of the capsule by waiting teams. A quick thumbs up was all the reassurance the control centre needed. And there we go, another thumbs up. It was a 19-hour journey home from the International Space Station. That's where they They'd spent the past 62 days completing spacewalks and experiments. An incredible moment for the future of private space travel too. This was SpaceX's first manned return trip from space, of course owned by billionaire Elon Musk. It bodes well for future private missions. What an amazing day. Uh, today we really made history. Um, we, we are entering a new era of human spaceflight. There's something special about having that capability to launch and, and bring your own astronauts home. They'll now be reunited with their mission control colleagues as well as their families. Everyone involved now breathing a major sigh of relief. Thank you very much. Meteorologist David Brown joins us now. Great <laughs> winter's day, Brownie. Oh, it certainly is, Anne. Yes, it's a beautiful day across our city at the moment. Well, it's sitting on 20 degrees. You'll notice it's got a veil of high-level clouds sailing through at the moment. Yes, there is a bit of a change on the way. Pressure's starting to fall across our state at the moment. It's 1,014.6 hectopascals and as I mentioned it's dropping. Frost ran all the way along the uh, spine of the Great Divide Range this morning and also through the uh, well adjoining slopes as well and some western pockets. In fact uh, parks dropped down to minus two degrees earlier this morning. Now there is a change on the way as I mentioned it uh, will bring some welcome rain to large parts of our state. It starts later this week most of it falling Friday and into the weekend solid falls for our farmers which is some great news but until then the uh, sunny weather continues over our neck of the woods, but we've got to look out for this. You'll, if you look carefully, you'll see a rather gusty, cold, there it goes, west to southwesterly estuary pushing through. Once that arrives, colder air will follow and temperatures will drop. But uh, at the moment, well, it's sitting on 21 degrees in Bondi, feels like 17. Penrith at the moment, it's 20 degrees, not as much wind, that's why it feels like 19. Local forecast in detail, top of the hour. Anne. All right, Brownie, thank you. Still to come in Sydney's afternoon news on 7, a garbage truck driver runs for his life after discovering a flaming surprise in the back of his vehicle. A man stabbed in the face in Piermont. What happened when the teenagers accused of attacking him faced court? Prince William throws a party, so who was on the guest list? And how taking a knock on the footy field could cause years of sleep issues. The story for every parent and player is still to come. I do like it. I like you back. One farmer is about to have his heart broken. That's true then. She just portrayed me. Hopefully get to the bottom of it tonight. We'll go from there. A new farmer wants a wife tonight, 7.30 on 7.
We're late. I need coffee. Hungry Jack's $2 medium coffee is all about great taste and getting it exactly when you need it most. Try our new, richer, better tasting $2 medium coffee all day at Hungry Jack's. Sudden death now on the towel flick. Alec. Yes! The Aussie's got him a beauty! Australia has a new Mr Whippy chuck a flake in mine. Another make it look easy moment from Sportsbet. We're here for the bingers, the laptop peekers, the episode sneakers, the binge all-nighters, those brave sleep fighters. With friends or your family or when everyone's gone, to all of you bingers. Binge on. Happy birthday! Are you serious? <laughs> Help take care of your family with Medibank Life Insurance. Apply for cover up to $2.5 million, depending on age and income. These undies make you chafe. And these, as well as these. Chafing is horrible. These are step ones. The inventors of no chafe underwear. They've got these lycra panels between the legs, which means no more chafing. You buy them at stepone.life and never chafe again. When life gives you dirtiness, Godfrey's gives you cleanliness. With products to keep every surface free from spills, dirt and allergens. For a clean and healthy home, Godfrey's cleanliness. If dry or flaky skin is causing you frustration and embarrassment, try E45 Cream. It soothes and relieves by creating an effective barrier to protect against skin dryness. Feel comfortable in your skin. Switch to E45. At Spotlight Super Sale, save 40% off all day-night roller blinds, 40% off all ready-to-hang eyelid curtains, 50% off timber and faux wood Venetian blinds, so you can open it, roll it and keep it warm for less. Sale on now. At Spotlight, it's what you make it. When did every day start to feel like one of those days? It's why we developed Panadol Rapid. Absorbed two times faster than regular Panadol tablets, so you can keep pace with the day. The thing is... Today's pace takes a toll. It's time to rethink how we look after ourselves. Because every positive change, no matter how small, can make all the difference. Together, let's rethink care. Some see a personalised plate. We see elbow grease, frustration and passion. A vision crafted by hand. More than a plate, it's a signature on a masterpiece. Create yours at myplates.com.au Having trouble hearing? One in seven people have the same problem. Audica can help. The latest hearing aid technology is small, discreet and some are rechargeable. Call Audica and mention this ad to ask about a free hearing aid trial. If you've never had your hearing checked, you could earn bonus Qantas points. Audica clinics are taking extra care to help keep you safe. Stop missing out on life. Call Audica on 1800 317 510 today. To breaking news out of Victoria now, the state premier has just announced a major shutdown of non-essential industry as the government struggles to suppress the outbreak. There have been another 13 deaths, along with 429 new virus cases in Victoria overnight, with the fight against the virus becoming more desperate by the day. Melbourne, once the most livable city in the world, now shutting down. As heartbreaking as it is to close down places of employment and um, whilst I never thought that uh, I would be telling people not to go to work, uh, that is what we have to do in order to stop the spread of this wildly infectious virus, this deadly virus. Supermarkets, news agents, service stations, bottle shops and pharmacies will stay open. They will still be open and they will have, uh, to the best of everyone's ability, they will have the fullest range that they possibly can have. There's no need for people to go and shop for things in bulk. Uh, that, that, that sense of uh, panic is simply misplaced. But from midnight on Wednesday, all non-essential retail will close. But retail will look very different than it has ever looked. No customers will be allowed inside Bunnings, but pickup will be available. Hairdressers will also have to close their doors. I know that there will be substantial pain, but unless we have literally hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people at home and not going to work, then we will not pull this virus up. And construction of homes will be impacted. That sector can, can obviously stay open. It will be unlawful 
uh, to have any more than five people on site at any one time. We are moving them to a pilot light phase. They're not being turned off completely, but they are dramatically reducing the number of people that they have working for them and their output over these next six weeks. These new restrictions have been piled on top of a Melbourne curfew, forcing all metropolitan residents into their homes between 8pm and 5am. The only reasons to leave are for work or caregiving. There's also shopping restrictions limiting the grocery run to a five kilometre radius. Exercise has been limited to once per day for one hour. Victoria will remain in stage four lockdown until September 13. Chanel Vella reporting. A garbage truck operator has had to dump his load of trash after it caught fire. The driver discovered the burning rubbish around seven this morning. The close call happened in a laneway near Kent and George Streets. The truck was towed away while the burnt cardboard was shoveled off the road. Six teenagers, including three Sydney private school students, have been charged over an horrific stabbing in Piermont. Ashley Hansen has more. Ash, what's the victim's condition? Good afternoon. Before photos of the stabbing victim were shown to the magistrate today, he was warned of the confronting and horrific nature of the man's injuries. The 36-year-old, who is still fighting for life in hospital three days on, lost an eye in the assault. Police say he was repeatedly slashed to the face in what's been described as a sadistic stabbing, with most of the man's injuries inflicted when the victim was unconscious. It happened at Piermont on Friday night, where up to seven Seven teenagers knocked the victim off his bike before allegedly savagely beating him. The alleged main offender who attends a prestigious school in Sydney's north is accused of concealing his face before he stabbed and slowly carved a knife into the victim's face. He and another 16 year old were arrested at Marsfield yesterday. The accused stabber made a release application today, but the magistrate refused him bail, saying the case against him is strong. And what is most concerning is there is no clear explanation as to why the victim was targeted and why the assault continued when he was unconscious. His 16-year-old co-accused was also refused bail today. Thanks, Ash. Raging flames have forced thousands of people from their homes in California. The huge blaze exploded in size, fed by low humidity, dry vegetation and scorching temperatures. At least one property has been lost. Almost 8,000 people near the city of Beaumont in Riverside County have been ordered to evacuate as flames leapt from ridgetops and came dangerously close to homes. Tropical storm Isaias is on the move, ploughing north along the Florida coast, whipping up high winds and heavy rain. It was downgraded from a hurricane after battering the Bahamas. South and North Carolina are now preparing for a direct hit. Prince William's hosted a garden party at the Queen's Sandringham Estate. Making the invite list, frontline workers, mental health ambassadors and die-hard footy fans who were treated to an outdoor screening of the FA Cup final. The event was held to raise the profile of the Prince's Heads Up mental health campaign. We thought, why not have the biggest conversation around mental health using football as that tool? And we've been really pleased with the response. The Football Association is in partnership with the Prince William's Heads Together initiative. Next in Seven's afternoon news, a wild roar breaks out on board a plane and it was all over face masks. Exclusive pictures see the moment a whale attacks surfers in Manly trying to protect her calf. And in Sport with Mel, the storm act on their crowd control problem. Tonight on Seven News with Mark Ferguson. How Victoria's lockdown could help stop the spread here. Is the government keeping up with school demand and the surfers who got too close off Manly? Tonight on 7 News at 6. The Aussie taking on the world's biggest stage, blindfolded. America's Got Talent, Tuesday on 7. Vodafone is for all you rulers. We get you, stream queens. And you, kings of connection. And you, your majesties of working from home. We're for you, supreme providers of screen time. And definitely you, the rejectors of contracts. It's your rules, your network, and Vodafone is at your command. You rule with Vodafone. We're coming to you live. 
from the scene. Tell us what you've got there. Toilet paper? Nah, just dinner stuff. Right. You must have paid an unprecedented price for that during these unprecedented times. Nah, they're from Aldi. Prices are always low. Let's just go. Whatever happens, our low prices are here to stay. Aldi. Good. Different. If you're experiencing abuse or domestic violence, contact 1-800-RESPECT for free, confidential advice and counselling, online and by phone 24-7. There's no place for abuse or domestic violence. Help is here. Authorised by the Australian Government, Canberra. A lot of people have sensitive teeth, but gum health is really important as well. If you've got sensitive teeth, you should be looking for something to help with the sensitivity, but you should also be thinking about, do I need to look after my gums? Using the new Sensodyne Sensitivity and Gum Toothpaste not only deals with sensitivity, it also maintains gum health when used twice a day, every day. I think it's fantastic to have a dual action toothpaste. Two benefits with the one toothpaste, what a great idea. So what cash flow boost is available for my business? What are the tax rules around job seeker payments? We've all got tax questions this year. Thankfully, at h and Block, we have the answers. Let's get you started. Maximise your tax refund. Book an appointment today. With degrees in business and commerce, community services, fashion, arts and design, you can graduate with a qualification and the hands-on skills employers want. Search TAFE New South Wales degrees or call 131 601. The 100% Aussie beef in Macca's Burgers comes from farms like David's in Queensland. My family supplies 100% Aussie beef to McDonald's. Thanks, David. Get into Macca's for hot, juicy, tasty burgers today. For over 120 years, lotteries have given us plenty to celebrate. As well as making millions of winners, lotteries have made a big difference to Australia. Like building a landmark, funding hospitals and supporting Australians through natural disasters. Today, that tradition continues with over $1.4 billion contributed last year alone. So, thanks to people like you, there's a lot to go around. An ugly brawl has erupted mid-flight or because of mandatory face masks. A plane load of tourists were on their way to the Spanish island of Ibiza when they jumped to their feet and started throwing punches. The airlines made masks compulsory, but two British holiday makers refused to wear them. The flight crew restrained the men with the help of other passengers. They were arrested by Spanish police when the aircraft touched down. I'm supporting now with Mel McLaughlin and the Rabbitohs want a bit of revenge this week, Mel. Yeah, they do, and there's no sympathy for former Rabbitohs coach Anthony Seabold at Redfern ahead of Friday night's grudge match between South Sydney and Brisbane. The Broncos beat the Bunnies in round two, but Seabold's side has lost nine of ten games since then. I don't want to say I feel sorry for him because, you know, it's his job. I think he's, he's handling himself well. He's just, got to, he's just got to keep going with it and, um, you know, Wish him all the best. Manly is waiting on scan results for Dylan Walker and Curtis Sirinan, who both suffered injuries in their 30-point loss to the Panthers. And the Sunshine Coast Council will cut 1,000 spectators for future Storm home games. It followed yesterday's scenes of a packed crowd with no social distancing at the clash with Newcastle. Melbourne say capacity was not breached, but has asked for police assistance to control crowds. Giant star Toby Green could miss up to three games after injuring his hamstring early in the 26-point win over Gold Coast that moved GWS up into seventh place, but watching his family go into stage four lockdown in Melbourne gave the superstar forward some perspective. Thinking of everyone back there, and um, I'm sure uh, we'll be getting around everyone, all family and friends in the next few weeks and making sure everyone's all good. Collingwood dropped out of the top eight with last night's 12-point defeat to Fremantle in Perth. The Newcastle Jets are just one win outside the A-League top six following a 1-0 victory over Western United in Newcastle. Roy O'Donovan, his 10th goal for the season, started in Brisbane, back in Newcastle and back in the goals. With one game left in their regular season, Carl Robinson's side have an outside shot at making the finals. They play Wellington Phoenix next Thursday. 
Lewis Hamilton has become the first Formula One driver to win his home race seven times with an incredible victory in the British Grand Prix at Silverstone. Despite suffering a tyre puncture on the final lap, the Mercedes driver held on to beat Red Bull's Max Verstappen and Ferrari's Charles Leclerc. Oh my God, I was just praying to try and get it round, not be too slow. I nearly didn't get round the last two corners, but thank God we did. Australia's Daniel Ricciardo finished fourth. Well, Jason Day has found form just before the first major of the year. The PGA Championship starts in San Francisco on Friday. There's something that that man knows how to do. Day finished tied for sixth at the World Golf Championships event in Memphis at nine under. 27-year-old American Justin Thomas claimed his 13th PGA Tour title by three shots to become world number one for the second time. And Paddy Mills was back for the Spurs in the NBA reboot today. Good if it goes, and it does. Three-point burst did good, but Paddy Mills. He had 10 points in a 108-106 to 106 win over Memphis. That kept San Antonio in the race for a 23rd straight playoffs appearance. We wish them well. We love seeing Paddy Mills doing so well on court. He does so many good things off the court as well. Absolutely. Thanks a lot, Mel. Thanks. See you soon. Don't go anywhere. Our top stories are just ahead. It's day one of harsh level four lockdowns in Melbourne. So what does life look like under the toughest pandemic restrictions Australia has ever seen? Plus, the property prices continue to slide. But there's promise of a turnaround coming up and bargains to be had in the meantime. Millions of dollars pumped into our city schools. Kids in the West are said to be the big winners. And wedding dresses for free. We'll introduce you to the charity making dreams come true for brides-to-be hit hard by the pandemic. It's more than just the moments. There was a tremendous amount of expectation. It's the untold secrets. I broke my ankle. I knew! All the drama. I was crying. I'm like, I don't want to go out to compete. Susie O'Neill goes in the touch first. I was just so afraid. They have won the gold medal! I know you will score the winning goal. It's everything you never knew. Can you believe it? Sydney 2000, uncovered Tuesday on 7. Is So Good Almond Milk the better milk for you? It's dairy-free and full of calcium. So Good Almond Milk is packed with vitamins and unsweetened varieties have no added sugar. Feel good inside and out and make today so good. A rare few seem to know just what to say and the right moment to say it, or when a gesture offers more than words. These are the people who become white ladies because that's who they're born to be. White Lady Funerals, a woman's understanding. So good to see you again, Harry. You too, Granny. I'm actually glad we split. Really? Yes. Whoever thought you could combine a supreme and pepperoni? Nothing brings people together like a Domino's half and half. Bring it in. Don't let persistent joint and back pain stop you there. You've got Advil 12 Hour for fast and long lasting relief of persistent pain for up to 12 hours with just one tablet. So you can do more for longer. Advil 12 Hour. At Coles, we're helping lower the cost of dinner with Coles brand Aussie Fresh RSPCA approved chicken portions with a delicious herb sprinkle down down to just $6.50 a kilo. Coles, good things, great value. These are step one underwear. They have these lacquer panels between the legs, which means no more craving. Uh, I mean chafing. Go to stepone.live and buy the best underwear in the world. No, really. Better than baguette, better than cheese. Life's full of and and even. No matter how messy life gets, handy paper towel is handy for every situation. Handy paper towel. Keep it handy. This Dyson high-speed hypodermia motor and DLS technology intelligently senses and adapts to optimize cleaning and runtime. Only a Dyson works like a Dyson. Live from Sydney, 7 News with Ann Sanders. Welcome back to our Martin Place headquarters. These are our top stories on 7. Melbourne is officially closed for business as sweeping new lockdown measures come into effect and major industries shut down. Meanwhile, Sydney siders are being told not to leave home without a mask 
with another 13 cases recorded overnight in New South Wales. Six teenagers, including three Sydney private school students, have been charged to over a horrific stabbing in Piermont. And the link between concussion and insomnia, the report for every parent is still to come. As well as new business rules, Melburnians are coming to terms with stage four restrictions at home. For many, the biggest adjustment today has been the strict limits on exercise and shopping. Cassie Zervos has more. Well, it's Monday afternoon in Melbourne's CBD and it's usually busy with people, but today there's hardly anyone inside. It is day one of stage four restrictions and it seems Melburnians are quickly adjusting. From the tan running track to Port Melbourne Beach and Albert Park Lake, some were making the most of their one hour exercise limit. Well, we can only go within 5Ks now, so yeah, so that's all we can do. We've come down um, Lonsdale Street to South Bank, which is 4.2Ks from our place, then along the river back home. So we'll, we'll stay under the 5k radius. My biggest and my wife, we can't see our grandkids or kids. That's the worst thing for us by a long shot. These best friends are from Perth, but remain stranded in Melbourne. I'm just in South Yarra, like two k's, three k's away. Yeah. Um, so I've been lucky the 5k bubble doesn't affect me too much. I mean, the exercise will be a struggle. Only so many boredom walks a girl can do. I moved over here in March, just at the start of COVID and I haven't been able to get a job because of COVID, so I'm trying to get home, but WA is not really accepting us at the moment. Premier Daniel Andrews has banned weddings in metropolitan Melbourne from Thursday. So in a mad rush, this couple decided to not wait any longer. They'll be tying the knot on Wednesday afternoon. It's definitely been a stressful time to try to do it in three days. Um, try planning a wedding in three days. It's <laughs> like the fourth wedding we've planned. Yeah. <laughs> we just said, well, we're going to get on with our lives. I guess everyone keeps saying this thing of COVID normal, and we thought we're not going to worry about postponing our lives. We'll just get on with it. In the last 24 hours, police have issued 172 fines. 27 of those were for people who weren't wearing a face mask. Thanks very much, Cassie. The latest housing data is out and it shows a downturn of Sydney's real estate market. Prices fell once again in July, marking the third straight month of declines. For more, let's bring in our finance editor, Gemma Acton. Hello, Gemma. The latest data suggests the worst is yet to come. Yes, well, and many people are surprised that the property market hasn't actually fallen more yet. If you compare it to the share market, which lost around a third of its value in just a few short weeks back in March, so far declines for Sydney property of around 2% seem very contained. So certainly there's an expectation that there will be more falls ahead. Economists are forecasting anywhere between 5% and 30%, depending on how the pandemic plays out. There's a lot of focus on what happens when the banks and the government rein in some of that income and cash flow support. The biggest risks for the housing market will come later this year where we do start to see government stimulus winding back and then early next year when home loan repayment holidays expire. That will really test the housing market. Gemma, Sydney's property market is historically very robust. When do experts expect prices to stabilise and begin to recover? Well, Anne, it's entirely dependent on the path that the pandemic takes, but certainly you're seeing very few people predicting any sort of a recovery before another two years. Firstly, when you lack confidence, you're not likely to go out and spend a tremendous amount of money on a property. And right now there's a lot of nerves around income security, job security, health and how the economy is going to go. And secondly, Sydney is very dependent on buyers coming from overseas and renters coming from overseas. So with the closed border policy at the moment, uh, that's certainly weighing on the market and will continue to do so for the near future. Finance Editor Gemma Acton. Thanks a lot, Gemma. An inquiry into the devastating Tathra bushfires on the state's south coast will be told it was almost certainly caused by a dead tree that fell onto power lines. As Leonie Ryan reports, firefighters faced extreme conditions as they battled the blaze. Good afternoon. Well, this inquest, which has begun at Lidcombe Coroner's Court, has heard it's remarkable no one was killed in the fire which destroyed 100 houses and caravans. We're hearing more details about this blaze in 2018, which started at Reedy Swamp and quickly spread to Tathra. One firefighter described the coastal town as coming under siege by embers falling from the sky. While no one died in this fire, which is usually the basis for holding a coronial inquest, 
They can be conducted in circumstances where a public official makes a request, and in this case it was former Rural Fire Commissioner Shane Fitzsimmons. This inquest will look at four factors, the origin and cause of the fire, electrical infrastructure such as power poles, the fuel loads such as grass, trees and bushland, as well as the response by emergency services. A number of experts will give evidence, but they do agree the sparks were almost certainly ignited by a dead tree which had been hollowed out by termites, which had in turn fallen onto power lines. The fire burned for two days before it was contained and took four days to put out. Now this inquest will run for the rest of the week and we'll hear from as many as three dozen witnesses, including firefighters, police officers and nearby residents. All right, Leonie, thank you. Hundreds of workers are in a wage dispute with Woolworths. The union claims Central Coast staff are being paid less than those in Sydney. The supermarket giant locked out staff from its Wyong warehouse after officials wouldn't agree to a 3.6% pay rise sparking today's protest. The delegates didn't want to do that because that is not a democratic process. The democratic process is that you take the offer to the workers and they decide on the offer. In a statement, Woolworths urged the union to put its members' interests first. A Western Sydney school will be equipped to help the state post-COVID-19 with new facilities to train young workers. It's part of the state government's $34 million election promise. But as Serena and Aloro reports, not everyone is happy. Good afternoon to you, Anne. Well, this announcement is part of a state government push to train up the essential workers of the future, helping students find jobs in a post-coronavirus economy and helping them maybe consider vocational education as an alternative to going to university. Within three years, Seven Hills High School will be turned into the state's first vocational high school, housing brand new purpose-built facilities for students teaching skills for community and health services, construction, transport and logistics. I want all students and all school communities to know that we're onto the job of making sure we make education as accessible and uh, as optimistic as we can for the future. The government talks a big game, but they don't actually build the schools that are needed to cope with Sydney's population growth. The opposition argues parents in densely populated parts of Western Sydney like Rhodes and Olympic Park are still waiting for promised schools to be built. And a mother and son have spent hours lost at sea. The duo's ocean ordeal started when their boat capsized in waters off Queensland's Stradbroke Island. The 66-year-old woman and her 37-year-old son were fishing when it flipped. They were only rescued after a passing boaty spotted them and raised the alarm. The woman was airlifted to hospital while her son was given the all clear. Microsoft is continuing its bid to buy Chinese-owned social media app TikTok. The tech giant has pledged that all private data of American users will be kept in the US if it acquires the video sharing platform. Donald Trump wants to ban the app, claiming it feeds the data of Americans directly to the Chinese government. Weddings are almost always an expensive exercise for loved up couples. And now the financial pressure of the pandemic is putting a walk down the aisle out of reach for many. One charity is working to make wedding dreams come true for frontline healthcare workers in the US. Demilka Gonzalez is on the front lines of the coronavirus pandemic, caring for COVID patients despite her asthma, making her high risk. I was very scared, but you gotta be there to take care of people. She planned to get married in October, but the financial strain of the pandemic almost put pay to that. I'm getting married and I gotta plan a wedding. And it's like, how do I, where do I even start? That's when she heard about Brides Across America. I saw, oh, we're giving out a free dress for um, COVID-19 um, workers. And I was like, this is, this can't be real. Heidi Jansen started the non-profit organisation in 2008 to give free wedding gowns to military and first responder brides. Now she's expanded her mission to help healthcare workers say yes to the dress. This is what we are about, is supporting those that support us on a daily basis. Stores across the country donate items to brides in need. Demilka is just one of them. It did make me feel special. It did make me feel like a princess. And that was before she learned it wouldn't cost her a cent. I started crying. All of those not sleeping nights, all of this stress, 
all of the overwork. It made it all feel like worthy. Christian Galpset, Seven News. Coming up on Seven's Afternoon News, spewing flames and speeding through the street, why the driver of this truck has been called a hero. Plus, incredible pictures see the moment a whale fended off surface at Manly Beach. And it's 19 degrees in Bondi. Brownie will have cities forecast soon. Captain Strand, we want you to come down to Texas to build an entire station from scratch. Okay, but I choose the firefighters. Have you got what it This crew can't just be good. They gotta be the best. Rob Lowe. Let's show them what we got. And Liv Tyler. In Texas, you do what I say, Captain. The new action thrill ride. 911 Lone Star. Tonight, 8.30 on 7. The all new Isuzu D Max is coming. Are you ready? Search all new D Max. Values, we all hold them dear. At Guardian Funerals, we care about them too. Because every day we're privileged to help families honour them in those they love, celebrating the values you treasure most. At Coles, you'll find new Carmen's Lunchbox-friendly Aussie Oat Bars with less than four grams of sugar. There's delicious brownie with chalk or scrumptious apple pie and custard. Carmen's Aussie Oat Bars, all half price. Coles, good things, great value. I juggle, but even when I juggle, I still suffer from chafing. Step one, they put these lycra panels between the legs. It glides when you walk. You can buy them online at step1.life. Step one, don't juggle these. Life's full of and and even. No matter how messy life gets, Handy Paper Towel is handy for every situation. Handy Paper Towel. Keep it handy. Don't let this deal be news to you. Lock in full digital access to the Daily Telegraph plus seven-day paper home delivery for just $1 a day for the first 12 weeks. Call 1-800-323-999 today. You know Yumi's great tasting dips. And now they've created an amazing new range of veggie burgers. If you're trying to eat less meat, they're a deliciously easy meal everyone will love. With the goodness of fresh veggies, herbs and spices, and no preservatives, they're proudly Australian made and bursting with flavour. Choose Yumi's for great taste you can feel good about. New Yumi's Veggie Burgers. We're for real. <laughs> Deb! Coming for a coffee? Oh, sorry, Trish. We've got to go. You can go your own way. Go your own way. You can go your own way. Go your own way in the seven seat Isuzu MUX from 46990 Drive Away. Making sure the COVID cash crunch doesn't leave you short. Five steps you can actually stick to and save on Sunrise tomorrow. A truck driver in China has managed to protect people from an explosion. He drove his rig out away from the city to an open area after it caught fire. Minutes later, the fuel tank exploded and the truck was destroyed. The driver was rewarded with a brand new truck to thank him for his bravery. You're watching Seven's Afternoon News live across Sydney. Still to come, the link between concussion and insomnia. How injuries on the sporting field can have long-term consequences. We're going to take you live to Canberra now. Here is our Prime Minister, Scott Morrison. And terribly devastating situation in Victoria. This has been another heartbreaking day for Victorians, which means it's a heartbreaking day for all Australians. I know that across Victoria, many today, frankly, would have reached breaking point, trying to come to terms with what has happened in their state, what it means for them, what it means for their family, what it means for their businesses. They've worked so hard for their jobs, for their livelihoods, for the care of their children and their education. It's heartbreaking. This pandemic, this virus, is taking a heavy toll. And now is the time, as it has been throughout this pandemic, that we continue to provide support to one another, that we look out for each other, 
that we offer an elbow of support. Wish it was a hug, but we know that's not going to help. <laughs> but that offer of support, being there for each other at this time, is incredibly important. If you've got friends in Victoria, call them. Cheer them up. Encourage them. Let them know you're there for them if you're in a state that is in, in a much better situation, which thankfully all other states and territories are. Offer whatever support you can. We've asked so much of Australians over these many months and we've asked even more of Victorians and now we're asking through the Victorian Premier even more. We know that we have to help them push through because Australia's future depends on these weeks and months ahead. So today I'm here to do nothing more than encourage people. You've heard what the announcements are from the Victorian Premier. You've heard what the additional restrictions are that the Victorian Government has decided to put in place with the additional workforce measures that have been announced today. And I expect there will be some frustration and some further clarity that will be needed to be provided in the days ahead uh, on the list that have been provided by the Victorian Government today. And we will need to work through that together. The Commonwealth Government similarly will have to do that on important issues like childcare and the like, and we're doing that right now. But right now, here today, it is a matter of just helping each other absorb what is another devastating blow. As we work to uh, come to terms with how we respond to the list which has been provided today, and I do want to thank uh, Premier Andrews over the weekend in particular. Um, there's been a lot of consultation that's been going on um, as our uh, agencies and departments, um, particularly the economic departments, uh, the industry department and so on, Prime Minister and Cabinet have been working with the Victorian Government uh, to provide our input as to where they went to from here. And the Victorian Government has considered all that and sent out the list that they have today. Um, but we will need some further clarity on a number of matters and I'm sure that will be forthcoming. The Commonwealth Government has been providing considerable support to Victoria, as the Treasurer said this morning, some $14 billion of support already there. The additional mental health support advised by the Health Minister yesterday, particularly important at this time. The JobKeeper program, the Job Seeker program is all there and available now. Businesses affected by today's announcements that previously may not have been on JobKeeper can apply now based on the prospective impact of these announcements on their business in the months ahead. They can apply for JobKeeper now. People can apply uh, who are affected potentially by loss of employment can apply for JobSeeker now. And those payments run at their current level, as you know, out till the end of September, which is beyond even the uh, period of restrictions that the Premier has announced, and that will continue. Mutual obligation arrangements for job uh, seeker for Victoria have been suspended in the way that they had been done previously to ensure that people can continue to access those payments. Now, last week I indicated to you that we were working um, on a plan and consulting and discussing these issues of, of pandemic leave, and we've been able to come to a conclusion on that today, uh, which I was awaiting um, the Premier's press conference before announcing. And so, I, for that reason, that explains the lateness of the hour as to why we're here uh, making those announcements this afternoon. Um, what we will be doing is establishing a pandemic leave disaster payment. Earlier this year, when we were confronting the bushfires, we made a number of additional disaster payments, uh, particularly for uh, children and families affected by bushfires. What we're dealing with here is a disaster, and we need to respond on the basis of the way we provide support in the midst of disasters. This pandemic is a disaster, and we need a disaster payment when it comes for people who have to isolate for a period of 14 days through no fault of their own regardless of what their um, uh, job they're in and employment they're in, uh, they need that support. Now, those who are already receiving JobSeeker, they're already getting income support. Those who are already getting JobKeeper are already receiving income support if they're in those circumstances. So what we'll be putting in place is for those who have no more sick leave available to them, 
uh, that they will be eligible for a $1,500 payment for the fortnight. That payment will be modelled on exactly the same set of criteria uh, that the Victorian government has put in place. Uh, those payments are principally made uh, to those who are on short-term visas, uh, so those who are not residents of Australia, permanent residents or citizens of Australia, who otherwise wouldn't have uh, accessed Commonwealth payments. Uh, the Victorian government will continue to provide that support. We will make sure that everyone else who finds themselves in this situation and they don't have that leave available to them uh, through their sick leave because it's been exhausted will get a $1,500 payment for that fortnight. Uh, that payment will be made in the same way that disaster recovery repayments are made. People would only need to uh, ring the number 180 uh, I'm advised from Wednesday and we'll be able to update that between now and then if there are any changes to that time frame. And they'll be able to make their application over the phone, uh, which they can do uh, for other disaster type payments, and that should be turned around fairly quickly. That means that those who need to self-isolate as a result of an instruction by a public health officer, there is no economic reason for you to go to work. Um, we are also encouraging the Victorian government to ensure that there are appropriate penalties in place for those who do break those public health notices and they're told to self-isolate and do go to work. They're putting their workmates at risk, they're putting their employer's business at risk, they're putting the broader health at risk. But today is not today for those types of instructions. Today is a day for letting Victorians know that we are there to support you. And we will be there to support you with a $1,500 payment in the same way that others receive JobKeeper, that if you're put in that situation, you can have that support for that two-week period. So that has gone through the Expenditure Review Committee of Cabinet today after formulating this proposal over recent days, and uh, we're very pleased to be able to do that. The cost for this obviously be shared on the basis um, that uh, it is currently being done between payments by the Commonwealth and the State. The State will, um, uh, will be proposing, and I've already discussed this with the Premier, um, will continue to pick up the cost for those two uh, uh, short-term visa holders. Uh, and the Commonwealth will pick up the cost for Australian residents and, and citizens as a result of this payment. People can actually access the payment multiple times if, unfortunately, they're in a position where they have to self-isolate as a direct requirement on multiple times. And uh, hopefully that won't be too often. And hopefully people will only have to go through that on the single occasion, but we know that isn't always the case. Uh, so that's where we've got to today. And before I hand you over to, uh, to Professor uh, Kelly, I just want to assure Victorians again that I know it's a really tough day for you and I know you've had some really heartbreaking news. Uh, the idea that in this country we would be living at a time where there would be a night curfew on an entire city of the size of Melbourne was unthinkable. But frankly, as we've moved through this pandemic, we've had to deal with a lot of unthinkable things. But I tell you what, we will deal with it. Victorians, I know, are up to it. I know they will support each other. And I know that other Australians will support Victorians. I just want all Victorians to know that here, your Australian government will continue to stand with you with all the support we can provide, because you will get through this, and we will get through it together once again. Thank you, Professor Kelly. And uh, thank that's you, Prime Minister. where we'll so, leave the uh, press conference uh, with Prime Minister Scott Morrison announcing a new pandemic leave disaster payment, $1,500 per fortnight, urging people to isolate if you're unwell. If you don't have any more sick leave, you can access this payment and you can access it more than once, multiple times, if you're unfortunate enough to have to leave it. $1,500 and there's a special phone number to call. More details coming your way at 6 o'clock. Well, in other news today, surfers and swimmers at Manly Beach have been left shocked after they were tail slapped by a 70 metre long southern right whale. Experts say the whale was protecting her calf when she slapped down inside shark nets. Samantha Brett has more. Well, there were some spectacular scenes here at Manly Beach yesterday afternoon when two whales, two southern right whales, came extremely close to the shore and the tip of the tip of the tail hit the surfboard. So then some of them, they actually padded away because yeah, it probably was a bit terrifying. They kind of went towards it and like went in a circle around them to like watch them closely. Dozens of surfers circled the whales to take a closer look. And so many surfers and even a diver who came very close. Uh, 
Yeah, when I saw the videos, I was like, okay, this is the real deal. Experts say it is an extremely rare sight, especially for this time of the year. These animals are massive and one whack could easily hurt someone or even kill someone. Well, it is mid-migration time, but we don't often see southern right whales up this far. Despite initial concerns that the whales may have gotten trapped inside the shark nets here at Manly Beach, thankfully they were able to swim safely away. Sydney 6pm News is coming up with Mike Ferguson. Hello, Mike. What are you working on in the newsroom? Yeah, hello there, Anne. We've just heard from the Prime Minister tonight, the very latest from south of the border. Victoria has announced drastic changes to the way it does business. From retail to construction, 250,000 people stood down in an instant. How will families survive? The New South Wales Premier says that shutdown will help us contain the spread of the virus here in New South Wales. Coming up at six, confusion over masks, a baby test positive and the latest flashpoints where the virus has been detected. Exclusive details on the legal loophole some drivers are using to get out of fines and avoid losing points. Why the government won't act to punish those caught using their mobiles. Two NASA astronauts have made an old-fashioned splashdown returning to Earth as SpaceX looks to the future and the moon. Plus, details about this mid-air brawl, the frightening fight at 30,000 feet, all over face masks. And all that and plenty more, Sydney 7 News tonight at 6 o'clock. Thanks a lot, Fergo. Well, it seems concussion can do more than prevent sports people returning to the field. It may also prevent them getting a good night's sleep. This is particularly concerning when it comes to teenagers whose development may be impacted by injuries sustained on the sporting field. Elise Baker explains. Knocks to the head are common in many contact sports, but Adelaide researchers think sleep could be the key to improving recovery. 20-year-old Max Borden was recently concussed while playing A-grade footy and says it didn't just leave him dazed and confused, but also struggling to sleep. He's now taking part in a world-first study where researchers are exploring the impact of concussion on sleep. They're recruiting players like Max and monitoring them at bedtime within seven days of receiving the injury. They're followed up six weeks later to help determine the extent of concussion-related sleep disturbances. The ultimate aim of the study is to develop strategies to improve sleep to potentially improve recovery from a concussion when you sleep better in general you just sort of you feel better and you, and you perform better anyway so we think it'll be very helpful the more they can do to treat concussion then then the more safer it is for all the participants involved the study made possible thanks to a grant from Flinders Foundation is expected to run until the end of next year Brownie's here now. More lovely winter weather on the way, Brownie. Oh, it's been an absolute cracker today, Anne. Yes, uh, low 20s, low 20s again tomorrow, and the wind's picking up perfect drying weather. In fact, uh, today's top, well, let's have a look at it. In fact, it was uh, 21 degrees at, uh, well, 137 this afternoon. High-level cloud continues to build across our state. Yes, there is a change on the way. As we look at current conditions, you can see that huge veil of high cloud just sailing through 11 degrees in orange. Uh, Newcastle at the moment sitting on uh, 20 degrees, 13 degrees. In Canberra, as we go to the uh, satellite, this uh, veil of high-level clouds associated with a complex change is lining up the southern states. Behind that front, there's a pool of very cold air, and guess what? Yes, some of it is eventually heading our way. Yes, the, uh, the front for us, it's a dry change. So for the nation tomorrow, different story in Melbourne. Cold and showery, small hail from time to time, around 11 degrees. For Brisbane, it should be fine and sunny at around 24 degrees. For us, well, sunshine tomorrow, top of 22 degrees, a freshening northerly breeze, that cold southwesterly change coming through around about mid-afternoon, but it is a dry change. And as for the next seven days, you'll notice high wind chill at times is likely on Wednesday under clear skies. Thursday, cold. Clear skies, light winds, cloud building on Friday, the rains are coming and they will stick around for the weekend, easing the showers early next week. That's the latest from the Weather Centre. More at 6 a.m. All right, Brownie, thank you. And that is Sydney's 4 p.m. news for this Monday. Mark Ferguson will bring you 7 News at 6. I'm Ann Sanders. Stay with 7 now for The Chase Australia and I'll see you tomorrow. Have a great night.